Well, praise the Lord. Good morning. Glad to bring you this message. I've actually been thinking about this message since yesterday. So I'm sorry, forgive me. I just came from the gym, kind of dirty here. But I'm hoping that this will put you in the gym, in the gym of studying your word and your gospel. So Lord Jesus, take your words and put them in my mouth. Guide this video that it goes all over the world to give the brothers and sisters the understanding of what you are doing when you call them. For many are called, but few are chosen. And have your way, Jesus, in your Holy Spirit's name and Jesus Christ's name and the Heavenly Father, the Lord God of all creation, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to share something with you. When a, when a person is called, God will talk to that person to tell that person, I'm calling you. I don't know how. Everybody has a different way. Mine happened in the anger management class I was doing. Ended up being a sermon. And then my pastor preached the same sermon right after. And that shook my world uh, 8, 15, 16 years ago. So I want to show something to you. And I pray that you really get this in your spirit. Because God is the one that calls he said, how should they hear unless I send someone? So check this out. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Now we're going to jump over to verse uh, 12. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 15. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, Gentiles, us, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, which means he didn't go to man. He went to Christ. He was getting all these revelations and everything. And if you go into Galatians, I believe, uh, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12, it talks about when the thorn he was given because of all the revelations that he was getting. And this, this thorn that was given to him was a messenger of the devil. And it's funny because everybody don't understand, God even used the devil to transform you. So this happens with, with Paul, right? Because of the revelations, because of the calling on his life and all these things. I want to touch base with you on something that I shared the other day about Luke 22, about conversion, right? Because this is all going to fit in together. Because if God is calling you, he's going to let you know. And then there's someone that's going to come and confirm it. But there's a price to pay. And some of you have been called and chosen to do certain things. But because of the way you're acting right now, people are like, ah, oh, that couldn't be you. You might not even believe it, but we're going to fix that. So in Luke 22, verse 31, it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, put your name there. Ronnie, Ronnie, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fell not, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. What Jesus is telling him is, I've already prayed for you. This is a done deal. You're going to be with him. And there's a reason that Peter had to do this. And, and we're gonna, I'm going to break it down more. I'm, I'm hoping that this will allow me to enough time. I probably need to stop talking so much. <laughs> And then in verse 33, it says, And he said unto the Lord, this is Peter, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, Jesus, I tell you thee, Peter, the crow shall not crock three times before you deny me. Now, he's sending him to be sifted. He's allowing this to happen. And he's telling him, while you're going through this transformation stage, because you need to go through this, Peter, because you're too full of yourself. You think you have it all together. You think you're better than the other apostles. But I have this plan, and I need this to happen. And stay strong in your faith. And when you've been transformed and converted, 
come back and strengthen your brethren because then you will understand a Galatians 6 1 how to come back and correct your brothers in love instead of judging them so I want you to understand something this is how powerful this is so he's telling Peter this right and over here he's telling Paul this but I want to see, show you what he told Peter in Matthew chapter 16 we're going to start at verse uh Verse 13, Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? The son of man am? Who do men say that I am? The son of man. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you? say that I am. Simon Peter, over here in Luke 22, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus answered him and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Now check this out. That's the same person over here that um, in, in uh, Galatians chapter 1, when it says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me to preach the gospel. See, God is doing all this. God is talking to Peter over here, telling him who Jesus is. So when Jesus goes on to say, I'm going to build my church on this rock. What he was saying is, Peter, in Matthew 16, he's saying, Peter. My God, my Father, your God, our Father, has talked to you. He's told you who I am. He's revealed to you that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. So as we go on to Luke, when he's realizing that Peter is, he wants to build churches through Peter, not on Peter. Remember, Peter is the one that kicked off in the book of Acts, the very first church. And that's what he meant by, I'm a, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. Not on Peter, but on, but Peter was going to start the, the new revelation of church building. And that's what the apostles are. Apostles are folks out there building churches. So if God got a calling on you, he's going to tell you. But just like Peter, he had to go through some stuff because Peter was in love with God, but his heart wasn't transformed. He wasn't yet ready to go out and do ministry. When he denied God, th Jesus, three times, he was broke at that moment. And that's when the devil had him. I got you now, Peter. Not realizing the devil's thinking, oh, he's going to give up. He's going to fall short. But he didn't. But just remember, he was going through the process of being sifted. And when he came, when Jesus came back from, from the dead, he asked uh, Peter three times, do you love me? Because the, Peter denied him three times. There's a there's a significance to the three loves. One was a love of just brotherhood. The second one was a love of fellowship with the brothers in teaching. The third one was an agape love where I'm willing to die for him. And you have to understand what Peter said, I'm willing to go to prison even to die for you. He actually did. So when you have a calling on your life, right? You may be going through some stuff right now that don't look like you even saved. But that's what the outside's going on. But you don't know what God's doing. You may have a season where you're going to be so, man, I, my, when I first got saved, man, I fell short. Like when I lost my wife, I, I, you know, I was still preaching, still teaching, but I had failed. I was doing stuff that I knew I shouldn't have done, but God was still using me. And, and the most awesome thing is the gifts and the callings come with our repentance. So God already knew, I got you. All right, I'm going to let you go ahead and think you got it together. And I'm still going to use you over here, but I ain't going to give you all the blessings I got for you because you're, you're not walking the walk. Remember in the, in the book of James, it says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. So even though I was broken, all that I went through, and I want you to pay close attention to this, all that I went through up to the last four years was a preparation of me to be able to see pastors that are falling and not telling the truth, churches that are broken and need to be healed and fixed, 
God sent me in the churches to say this is wrong, that's wrong. It wasn't me doing it, but because of my brokenness and my transformation and my conversion, I became transparent. See, I ain't no perfect man. There ain't no perfect man or woman, but I serve a perfect God who took my mess and turned it into a message. But he called me a long time ago. But right now, the way he's moving through me is because of all the failures and mistakes that I made. And he, in my opinion, he wrapped it all up so I could be the teacher and preacher that I am. Because I'm transparent. I, I mean, I still sin. I ain't a sinner, but I still sin. But my life belongs to God. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in, through, and by, and for me. So what Christ is doing in me is he's, he's taking himself and he's living through me and you. And he's teaching and preaching through the way we walk, talk, and act in front of other people. So if you ain't right and your walk is messed up, you need to fix it. Just like Peter. Some people get saved, but they're not converted. And conversion takes time. See, people think automatically you get saved, you get filled with the Holy Spirit. No. There's a process. John the Baptist baptized the flesh to repentance to turn around and get right with God. But if you go into the book of Acts, they said, do you know the Holy Ghost? And they was like, we know nothing of a Holy Ghost. Because some people don't present it. Do you not know that Jesus and God are not working no more? God created everything. Jesus died for everyone, and the Holy Spirit came to finish the process. You need to understand that God is sitting down, Jesus is sitting down at his right hand, and the Holy Spirit is doing all this work. He's always communicating with them, but you need to understand the serious you, seriousness that you need of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one doing all this. Remember, all that I'm reading you is from the New Testament. This is where the Holy Spirit came. So, once again, to kind of wrap this up, in Galatians Paul is talking about how he's been called by God, not by man, and his revelations are coming. Now, we need preachers and teachers to guide us and help us, and we need Bible study, and, and, and the, the, the Bible says, do not forsake the fellowship of the saints. That's very important. Fellowship, Bible study, church, that's so we, God could speak through one another to one another, so that he can lay hands on the sick through someone, you know. I heard a really beautiful message this morning, and I'm going to end with this because time's running out. I heard a message that I preached on to you guys a couple of days ago, and I was like really, really blessed because when you're ministering and you hear other, you know, men of God that you know are seasoned preaching the same thing, you know God's moving because there's only one spirit. But he was teaching on how God heals some folks and not all other folks. And it's not called fairness, it's called God's f mercy. God doesn't have to heal everybody, and he's not going to heal everybody. And I'm listening to this message, I'm going, wow, I was just, you know, preaching about this. And so when I heard it, it comforted me because it let me know that I'm on the right track with God. Some of you have been called and chosen and you have a ministry wrapped up inside of you. You may not see it right now. Somebody's probably even uh, prophesied this to you. Don't give up hope. Don't get weary. Don't lose faith because you're in the motion of coming to that person. And when God is ready and his time is appointed time and season, he's going to move through you. He's going to remove all those sinful things that you were doing like he did with me. Man, I ain't never been this holy. Believe you me. I will tell you one day, man, man, I sinned the greatest sins of sins when I fell, even though God was using me, but I don't hide that because folks need to understand that pastors, preachers, leadership, they fall and we hurt and we get broken and then we don't want to tell nobody because we feel like they're going to judge us, but they need to hear that because baby Christians need to understand that even those up there have the same fights and battles and falls and mistakes and sins and backsliding that they're still doing. Because we're not going to be perfected till we get home. That's what Jesus said. I'm working on them until I come back. So Heavenly Father, as we come before this day, I pray that this video will have made it, Lord. I know I went over my minutes, but I really wanted my brothers and sisters to get this message. Today, give them everything that they need to walk in the calling and the anointing that you have placed upon them.
Bless them in ways they've never been blessed before. Give them eyes that can see the pain and sorrow of this world. Give them a heart to want to be used by you, to want to go out and preach the gospel, even if preaching the gospel is just living right in front of others. And Heavenly Father, as I come before you, Lord, I am laboring in prayer for each and every prayer that is on this mirror, Lord, for healing of the children, healing of the families, restoration of the families, strength in the marriages, financial breakthroughs, for homelessness, for salvation to come to their house. Lord God, we we are calling you to do this for we know that with you all things are possible you told us to call upon you in our time of need and that you would be an ever-present help so at the sound of my voice each and every person that is going through a dilemma bring it to the lord leave it at the altar of grace walking away leaving it there and allowing him to come in and move in the power of might that he is choosing to move in and i thank you lord god for allowing me to have this word preach this word and even for waking me up today and placing your words in my mouth for they taste so good coming out i pray that they feel good going in the ears of your sons and daughters and i ask all this in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen